Hello, this is Mike again from Scratch, and welcome back to another episode of the Game Dev Toolbox. This is a look at the tools available for game development, be it artists, programmers, sound guys, etc. And today we're going to be looking at one for the artists. And as you can guess by the uh, the webpage up in front of you, we are looking at Sculptures today. Uh, now, Sculptures is the baby brother of the program ZBrush. Actually, the history is a little bit more interesting than that. It started off. Um, kind of as an homage of sorts. So uh, there's a guy who really liked ZBrush, went ahead and created his own light version um, called uh, Sculptress, which ultimately the group behind ZBrush, Pixelogic, uh, hired this guy, bought out uh, Sculptress, and since then they have made it available for free. Uh, now let's address this right up front. Again, completely free, but it also hasn't been updated in a very long time. So this is a three or four years out of date since the last update. But truth of the matter is, it doesn't really need to be. For what it does, it does it well. And this is an entry level sculpting app completely free. And if you start needing more functionality, obviously that's where its big brother ZBrush comes in. Now by no means is Pixelogic the only player in the sculpting space. In fact, uh, all of the major players, uh, Max, Maya, and Blender all have sculpting built into a certain degree. And then there are dedicated sculpting applications such as ZBrush, um, 3D Coat, uh, Mudbox from Autodesk, and I believe um, there's one more that I'm not remembering right now, but there are a number of choices in this field. However, Sculptress is the one free option, and it does give you a pretty good idea of what the workflow is like. Um, so I went ahead and downloaded it. The download's about 13 megs in size. Uh, installed, I think it takes about 30 or 40 um, megabytes of space, so it's a very minimal impact program. And let's bring it up. If you've never used a sculpting program before, this is going to be probably a bit of a revelation to you. Uh, it's kind of like working with virtual clay. That's the metaphor at use here. And generally you will find it rather intuitive. Now at the same time, it also creates incredibly dense meshes. Uh, so what you're making here is not in any way appropriate for real time games. Here you can see the default. It, it starts off, you either use a sphere or a plane. So those are your two modeling primitives. This will be very useful for say, uh, creating terrain, uh, but we'll go back to making a sphere instead. And you'll see here there's this mirror line. That's because symmetry is turned on. And we've got the option, we can show the underlying wireframe or not. Uh, we've got tools here like so we can subdivide, automatically add a bunch of detail, but you'll find our brushes as we go add detail, uh, quite a bit of detail in fact. So you see right, if you look down here after that subdivision I just performed, we're dealing with 8,000 triangles. And so let's undo that. So we're back to 2,048 triangles. Um, and then we're going to start using the brushes and you're going to see almost immediately uh, the ramifications. So first off we're going to use just a draw brush. And this is like adding more clay in a shape on top of a clay model. And you come in, you see the radius of your underlying brush. And again, this mirror is on for symmetry. So we're going to do it on both sides of that mirror of symmetry. And let's say we're doing a head right away. So we'll do the, um, the eyebrow, like so. We'll do the nose, like so. And you'll see the mesh now in the area we just modeled is rapidly subdivided. So now we're up to 7,594 triangles. We'll go ahead, we'll just pull that nose out a little bit more. So, all right, he's got a bit of a big nose now. Um, we'll uh, crease the brow a bit. Uh, we'll flatten in the face. So we we'll go, so we're, right now we've used crease and draw. Let's go in here and use flatten. And yeah, so we've got the radius. We'll change the radius out way out. So we're flattening a large space at once. And then down here, you've got your strength, your controls for your various things. You can control it so that it's, it's only locking uh, relative to your view angle, etc. Uh, so we'll just do a rapid squish in. And we're just flattening the side of our surface. So you see a little bit better from this angle. So we're flattening their sphere in. We'll do it at the top of his head too. We'll call it, make this guy a bit of a flat head. All right. So there, now we've cubed off this guy's head. Now we've got other uh, tools in here as well. We've got uh, Pinch, probably most noticeable is, is on the nose. Let's, let's pinch his nose in a bit. And there's the result of Pinch. Uh, inflate, and this uh, expands it out instead. So let's make his nose a little bit bigger. Let's make his nostrils a little bit bigger. Now you'll notice it's still adding underlying detail as we go. We're now up to 16,000 triangles. Uh, for the record, I am running this on a um, three-year-old laptop with a GeForce uh, 765 M processor. So not, not a complete slouch of a machine, but not cutting edge by any means. So uh, it will run on almost any real GPU brush. Now we can come back in here. We've also got this reduce brush and we can start getting rid of some of that detail as well. So if we've got 
too much detail in the array, so now yeah, we're we'll back down. So we're at, say, 1452, and I don't need this space in here. Use a reduced brush, 14256, 14202, 41. So you do have a little bit of control over it. You add the detail where you need it, take it away where you don't. And now we've got the next guy here is your, um, so we can smooth, kind of almost look at it as a, just kind of rounding off the area that we, smooth is actually also very handy for, you know, let's push his cheeks in a bit, like so. Do this with the back of our head as well. But it's just for kind of rounding off the roughness. Um, but the key guy that you're gonna probably use a lot, which doesn't change the underlying geography, I don't believe, is grab. And grab's gonna come in in either push or pull, depending on your mill structure. So if we wanna say push these cheeks in, we wrap it, oh no, it very much does create geometry. But it's sort of like a rapid, sort of virtual hand That full undo, I'll undo that push. So with grab, you could do really major topology changes all at once. So, so as you can see, creating characters is trivially simple with this guy. And now once you're done, so let's say this was what we were trying to model. Now once we were done, we can now go ahead and paint. And the truth is, day to day, majority of people's workflow with sculptures is probably gonna end now. Uh, you create this mesh and then you export it out. And let's talk about that for a second. You've got a pair of options here for exporting. You can export out as an OBJ format, which is the old fashioned um, alias wavefront, uh, kind of universally supported model format. Now it's kind of antiquated, but it's incredibly well supported. Uh, basically every single 3D package you can imagine is gonna support OBJ format. Now at the same time, OBJ is not good for animations, multi-texturing and various other things. So it's very good for taking static meshes reliably from one program to the next. But once you start getting into advanced texturing, etc., OBJ is not the best format. And once you get into animation, it's a terrible format. Uh, but for just bringing our model out, works perfectly. So we go ahead and we can export this guy out like so. And then we just go ahead, quickly uh, fire up Blender here. So let's do an import. So as I said, it's available everywhere, including right here. And in. So there you go. The exported version, original, like so. So the modeling process and the export out, no problem at all. Now what we can do, and what you would probably do if you want to use the paint things, you would probably take your mesh into your external tool, UV unwrap it using whatever tools you wish, and then export it back to OBJ and import it into Sculptress. That way your UV format when you export it again is going to work just fine. Uh, but ignoring that process for now, we'll just stay completely in Sculptress. Once you've got your model where you want it to be, you just click paint and then we're going into the paint process. Uh, now keep in mind, the minute I do this, oh, pick the resolution of your underlying texture map. We'll go over the 1024 by 1024 map. Um, it's gonna turn basically this from a Sculptress mesh into a paintable mesh. And here we are now in the paint tools for um, Pixelogic, oh sorry, for uh, Sculptress, and there's no going back. So once you click paint, you can't model anymore. Um, and again, this might be one of those reasons why you would sculpt, send your to your external program, UV and wrap it, and then you can bring it in using an import and you're gonna end up at this process anyways. You're just gonna end up at this process with a UV mapping that works for exporting it back out to your tool of choice. Um, but here we'll just go ahead and use the paint as it stands. Uh, rapid fire, so if you've got brushes and textures, these can be how your underlying paint works. Um, but your tools otherwise switch to painting colors paint, or painting butt maps or a rapid fill. And you'll see over here, we've got one material. Um, this is actually being left over from the last one I've got you. So it's picked up a few things, but let's come in here and we'll pick basic skin. So these are the, the materials that actually shipped with uh, Sculptress. So we'll pick basic skin, we'll come over here and fill it. Let's pick more of a skinnish color. Fill. All right, so our base layer is of skin now. So go ahead and add a new material. So we're now on material two. We're gonna just lay it over top. So we're just creating um, many layers of materials very, very quickly. Uh, we'll make this material, I don't know, we'll use a silver. And come in and we'll make it like a bluish silver like so. And you got your set of controls over here. As I said here, there's a texture textured brush we can paint in um, and it will paint along those styles. So we, is that, yeah, it's enabled. 
uh, and come along here and so we could do the same thing with texture and paint with the texture so say bark select that we'll enable that and we'll disable the brush so now we're going to paint that texture on our surface so or we could have done it using the brush like so now we're going to take that brush instead and we're going to switch over here to bump map and this is going to paint the bump map channel of our underlying shape now if you look closely you'll see that it's roughing it up and we're basically generating a bump map with this paint that we're applying now instead of a color map now we'll switch back to uh, paint color we can easily change our color here we can change our material we can add another one should we wish let's come in here and we'll make this a uh, I don't know let's make it a uh, skin tone I am making the ugliest model as we go we'll turn these both off so we're just using straight out paint at this time yeah so purplish paint and then up here you see we've got um, size so that's you can see by the circle the overlying shape that we're doing strength which is the amount of paint being done and the hardness um, got a couple of options for how everything is handled like so and then otherwise let's we can just do a quick why do I not oh, turn the brush back on oh color come on there we go and that is your texturing process. So basically you're doing a paint, you've got uh, multiple layers you can come in. It's, it's fairly simple compared to other texturing programs, but it's also very fast, very easy. And then once you're done, click down here. This is the show advanced tools and we can go ahead, we can save our texture map out. So we'll save over that one. Uh, you can save out your normal map and you can save out your bump map. Or should you have had uh, Photoshop installed, you could save out your um, save it all as a PSD file and bring it out. So we've now exported out as um, an OBJ file, and we now export all of our textures. We can now bring those into whatever we want and use it in our game. Now again, we're sitting at uh, 23,000 polygons at this point, and that is really light. You could have easily come out of here at a half a million type of thing. And here's our generated results. So there's our normal map, our bump map and our texture maps using their UV unwrapping system. And you could obviously put that into wherever you wish now and you are good to go. And essentially that is all of Sculptress. Sculptress is very much virtual clay modeling with a full set of tools for quickly handling all of that. And on top of that, it's a texturing tool for layering multi-textures that you can go out and generate uh, those three kinds of maps. You can create your normal maps, you can create your color map or your diffuse map, and you can create a bump map. And for probably most games, those are actually the maps that are in use. Uh, so that's Sculptress. Now, one of those things that I want to point out quickly before we move on, though, is this is easily worked around. So this 23,000 polygons or half a million polygons or whatever, what you might want to look into is an earlier program I looked at um, as part of the Game Dev Toolbox called Instant Meshes. And I'll link this down below, uh, but this will allow you to import an OBJ format conveniently enough and reduce the mesh count quite a bit while creating an underlying topology that is more game friendly. Because this is gonna be a very dense mesh and it's going to have crap edge loops. So that's where something like Instant Meshes will really shine. So you can use uh, Sculptures for your initial sculpt, Instant Meshes for cleaning the mesh up, and then whatever program you wish uh, and your your tool chain is sublimely good. It actually works very, very well. Or your other option is you can come into a tool like Sculptress here, paint your really high def version, bring it into whatever tool you're using, um, such as Blender, and do a retopology. Basically paint a lower resolution version over the high resolution version you've created, and then apply the normal and bump map that you've generated here, and you will you will appear to have all the detail, but a much, much lower polygon count. I'll also link to a um, retopo tutorial I did earlier on down in the comments below if you want a little bit more to go with there. Uh, so that's it for today. That's uh, Sculptress from Pixelogic, completely free application. Uh, consider it the gateway drug to the world of 3D sculpting. And if you wish more 3D sculpting, be sure to check out um, 3D Coat, ZBrush, 
and Mudbox. Those are the big players in this space. But also remember that most of the major packages out there, Maya, Max, and Blender, all have some degree of sculpting built in them as well. It's just I don't think any of those three have as smooth of a workflow as what you get in sculptures today, or especially not um, its big brother ZBrush. So hope you enjoyed that. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. See y'all later. Bye.